Eric Burgess here. A die is rolled five times. Find the probability of getting at least one three. So, okay, three. We're rolling this die five times. Chances we get a three are pretty high. You need just one three. So we say, okay, we need at least one. At least one, its complement is none. So what are the chances we don't get any threes? If we take that off of 100%, one minus the probability of none is equal to the probability of at least one, right? This is just using the complement. So this is the one thing that's not included in at least one. So if we remove it, we'll be left with just this. It's kind of like you're in a room and 20 people drink water out of 100 and you want to know how many people didn't drink water. Well, you would just take off the people that did drink water and you'd be left with the people that didn't. That's exactly what we're doing here. We're saying, well, all the stuff that happens in at least one, the one case this doesn't account for is when no one does it. When no one does it, this is not fulfilled. It's the one time it's not. So we just say, well, if we take 100% minus that, we'll get the chance that we get at least one. In this case, we're looking for one three. So the chance of getting not getting a three, right? Well, there's a one out of six chance on a dice that assuming it's a six-sided die, that we get a three. So there's a five-six chance we don't get a three. And to get no three, we have to do this thing five times. So we have to take this to the fifth power. So using our formula, we say, okay, well, one minus is a chance, chance we don't roll three. And we're taking it to the fifth because we'll roll five times. And right, the reason it's five is because it'd be the first time's five, six, and then the second time we don't get a three, so that's still five, six, and then the next time we don't get a three, and it has to be and, because it has to be the first and the second and the third, because we're not allowed to get a three ever, which is the same thing as multiplying, and so multiplying we can just use exponents for. So whatever this is, is going to be the probability of at least one. So we're going to do one minus, and then we're going to do 5, 6, so 5 divided by 6 raised to the 5th. We get out a number which is 0 0.598. This is the probability, and it is reasonably high, right? You'd expect if you roll it 5 times and you, you just need 1, 3, at least one of them, pretty good chance it's going to happen. Especially since five, geez, there's only six sides on the dice five times. Holy smokes, man. So that is how you do a question like this. If you have any questions about this question, feel free to drop your question down in the comments below. Subscribe and hit that bell icon and we'll catch you in the next problem.